I get a lot of questions about Skylab, so today on Vintage Space I thought it would be worth taking a step back and just doing a little bit of an overview. What exactly is Skylab? Skylab, put simply, was America's first ever space station. It launched into orbit on May 14th of 1973, and it hosted three crews before it was eventually abandoned in orbit. But interest in an orbital space station started well before the 1970s. In the 1950s, in the pages of Collier's magazine, Werner von Braun championed the idea of building a massive donut-shaped space station in orbit. From that station, he said, other missions could launch to the moon or to other planets. But with NASA so singularly focused on landing a man on the moon in the 1960s, the space station idea was kind of put on the back burner, but it was brought up again as part of the Apollo Applications Program. More generally, the Apollo Applications Program was the program designed to make use of disused Apollo hardware, hardware from the missions that were cancelled. Among this hardware was spare rocket stages, and this is where Skylab comes in. The idea was to design an orbiting space station using one of these old rocket stages, but it could either have been a wet workshop or a dry workshop. The idea would be for a crew to launch into orbit on a Saturn V rocket, the same one that took Apollo astronauts to the moon. Once in orbit, they would go into the S-4B upper stage, the third stage of the Saturn V, and empty it out and then put everything inside that they would need to turn into a habitable module. The simpler idea was the dry workshop idea. Turn an S-4B stage into a space station on Earth and then launch it such that it would be ready for the first crew to just go on in. NASA eventually went with the dry workshop idea, but this posed its own problems. NASA engineers had to design on Earth a station in which up and down don't matter, but a floating pen could become a nuisance and even a problem. It would have to withstand forces up to 4 Gs or 4 times the force of gravity during launch, and also withstand jarring motions associated with earthquakes. Not because there are earthquakes in space, but because when the Apollo spacecraft would dock with the Skylab station, the resulting force would be equivalent to an earthquake. In the end, the station developed as a multi-piece design. The largest section was the orbital workshop that housed the crew quarters and the main experiment area. There was an airlock attached to the forward end of the workshop and a docking adapter attached to the forward end of the airlock, so the Apollo spacecraft would have something to dock with. There was also the Apollo telescope mount, the first ever manned astronomical observatory designed for solar research in Earth orbit. All told, Skylab weighed about 100 tons and took up roughly the same space as a small three-bedroom house. There were a lot of technologies NASA wanted to test aboard Skylab as well, including jet shoes, something I talked about in this video right here. In addition to science goals for the Skylab program were a host of behavioral and human factors goals. NASA really wanted to understand how humans could really live in space. At that point, the longest mission was Gemini 7, on which Frank Borman and Jim Lovell spent just two weeks in space. If NASA was going to be sending astronauts far beyond Earth orbit, it would have to know how to keep those astronauts both happy and healthy. Ultimately, only three crews ever visited the Skylab space station before it was abandoned in orbit. And ultimately, its orbit decayed. The station re-entered the Earth's atmosphere on July 11th of 1979, scattering debris over the Indian Ocean and Western Australia. And one piece of Skylab ended up making a very interesting appearance at the Miss Universe pageant that year, something that I talked about in this video right here. Skylab may have been the first, but it certainly wasn't the last space station that NASA would be involved with. Ideas for a space station called Freedom were eventually abandoned, but the International Space Station, as we know, is orbiting the Earth right now. There is so much to be said about the Skylab program and so many details to dig into, but I want to know what you guys love about Skylab first. Tell me your favorite stories about Skylab or leave your Skylab questions or general space questions in the comments below and I will do my best to answer as many as I can. For more Vintage Space content every day of the week, be sure to follow me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space and on Facebook as Amy Shearer Title. And with new videos going up every Tuesday and Friday, unless I'm traveling, in which case my schedule might be off by a couple days, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.